Hello YouTube, we're on to video number four. There are a few items I would normally do first to our mining server, but I'm going to skip these for the time being so we can do something more fun and meaningful. Now, I promise at the end of this video, you'll have some satisfaction from your investment in the first three videos. In this video, we install Bitcoin Core and begin downloading the blockchain. Uh, you might recall from previous videos that having the blockchain on our computer is the basis for having our wallet on our computer instead of hosted by some unknown uh, third party and it is also the basis for solo mining instead of pool mining. Basically we're creating our own pool. Uh, before we begin, uh, if you are one of those people who had issues with um, booting from USB in the last video and are you were using the micro SD card uh, with the Pi OS to do your firmware updates I wanted to mention two important things to you first when you make the firmware updates while inside of the Pi OS and reboot as I instructed it's important to let it reboot back into the Pi OS meaning do not remove the micro SD card during the reboot the reason for this is the firmware update does not occur until after the reboot when it reads the data from a directory in the Pi OS. Uh, so for that reason you have to let it do a full reboot and come back up again inside of Pi OS. Then shut it down, then remove the SD card and plug in your SSD hard drive and power it back up. Um, if you're really absolutely struggling with this point you could also enter the command uh, sudo raspy-config and you could make some changes here to your booting in the um, Raspberry Pi OS. At this point you should be ready to access your Ubuntu uh, operating system either directly on the console with a monitor and keyboard plugged into your Pi or remotely um, by SSH access which is how I'm doing it right now. Alright, so uh, at this point you're going to log into your Pi running Ubuntu with uh, username Ubuntu and password Ubuntu. After doing this, it's going to require you to change your password immediately. Now I've already done that, so I'll just put in my new password. But your first login, it will require you to change it. So you need to decide right now whether or not you want to keep using the Ubuntu username or if you want to use another username. Certain things are going to come to depend on the account that you're going to use. Now, I recommend creating a new user, uh, especially if you'll be accessing uh, the server or computer over SSH through the internet, so people cannot try and guess your password on a default account such as Ubuntu. Uh, if you want to use a different account here, this is how you do it. At the command prompt, we're going to type in sudo add user and then the username where I have name in brackets here that just basically says you make up your own name. Now I'm going to use username Bitcoin and if you'd like to do the same that's that's fine too. Wants to know your password? And at this here, you can just hit enter. Is the information correct? Just say yes. Sudo is a command uh, that we'll use quite often. And so it's important that we give this newly created user the permission to invoke sudo. So we're going to type sudo user mod dash lowercase a capital G sudo and then the username that we just created. In this case, the username we created was uh, Bitcoin. Okay. Now we're going to log out by typing either log out or exit and then uh, log back in as our new user. The whole screen disappears. I gotta bring up another screen. There we go. Username Bitcoin and your password.
On an older version of Ubuntu, I had to tell Ubuntu which shell that I wanted to use, uh, but that does not appear to be necessary on this newer version. If you're using an older version and you want to set your preferred shell, uh, you can run sudo chsh to change it. But if you're running um, version 21.04 uh, like I'm running, you don't have to worry about it as uh, the bash shell is the default shell and the bash shell is the shell that I recommend that you use. Now let's remove the old Ubuntu account since it's kind of a security breach since it is a default account. We're going to run sudo user dell r ubuntu and it wants to know our sudo password. And um, the dash R basically tells Ubuntu to also remove the Ubuntu home directory. Now let's move on to some of the exciting parts. We're going to download Bitcoin Core. Uh, first, we're going to change directories to our new home directory. And your home directory is going to have the same name as your username. So we're going to run uh, right here cd slash home slash bitcoin bitcoin being our newly created user if that's what you did use next we're going to actually download the bitcoin uh, core software just going to paste this in here hit enter and it's downloading this version of Bitcoin Core uh, is made for um, Arch 64, which the Raspberry Pi, that is the CPU that it uses. It's not an Intel, it's not an AMD, it's a special, um, it's a special CPU that is neither Intel or AMD. Also called ARM, ARM. It's going to take about three minutes. I'm going to just sit through this. The reason choosing the username first uh, was so important is because when we start this up, the data directory and some config files are going to be created automatically in this directory. After we're done downloading, let's make sure that we have it. Let's run uh, ls-l. You'd see it in there with the size of about 32 megabytes. This file is zipped, so let's unzip it. Now, if you issue another ls l. You should see the directory in blue. Now, did you happen to notice that when I ran the tar command that I did not use sudo in front of the tar command? This is because I want the directory permissions to be from our user that we created. If I would have unzipped um, the Bitcoin file with sudo tar, then the directory permissions would have been set to root, which we don't want. So let's go inside of this directory by typing cd uh, space Bitcoin dash 0 0.21.0. You take a quick look in here. So we're nearly ready to start Bitcoin Core, but before we do, I want to create a small startup script to handle the startup of Bitcoin Core, uh, Bitcoin Core in a certain way. I want it to start as what is called a daemon, and this simply means that after it starts, it will return me back to the command line instead of running in the live window. If, if it runs in the live window, then it will force me to open a second window which to work in. So. 
We're going to use Vi again, similar to how we did in a previous video. You can call it, I called mine Start Me, uh, but any other clever name you want to use is fine for the name of your file. Um, if you recall from the previous videos, um, in order to insert any text into a file opened by Vi, we have to first press the Insert key on the keyboard. So on your keyboard, just find the Insert key and press it. And you'll notice in the lower left hand uh, corner of the screen it says Insert. So it is ready to accept uh, the text that we want to type into this file. We're going to type the following into the file. The preceding period is required. Dot Bitcoin sla uh, dot slash bind slash Bitcoin D space daemon uh, dash daemon. After typing this, press the escape button on your keyboard to get out of insert mode. Now we're ready to sa uh, save it. We're going to hold down the shift button and type the colon. And if you look in the lower left hand corner of the window, you should see a colon there. Now type WQ. And then press the enter key. The file is now written. Basically the W means write and the Q means quit. Finally, we need to make this file executable. At the command prompt, we're going to issue the following command sudo change mod 755 start me, which is the name of our file. 755 is a permission that tells it to be executable. Uh, now, issue a ls l command again. And if everything went normally, the start me file should be there in green and the green basically means that it is executable. So now comes the moment of truth. It's time to turn on Bitcoin Core and start downloading the blockchain. So type the following and then hit the enter key. It should, after hitting enter, it should say Bitcoin Core starting and basically return you to the command prompt, which it has. At the command prompt, now let's type in the word pop, T-O-P, and hit enter. And basically the first line or two, um, the first user, the first or second user process you should be seeing is Bitcoin D, which is right here. And it should be consuming quite a bit of CPU for a while. Right now it's only 7%, uh, but it's going to jump up there as it starts downloading. So if Bitcoin D is running, congratulations, you have this set up correctly. Now let's type in Q, the letter Q, and then enter to quit out of uh, top. We're back at the command prompt again. Let's exit the current directory and go up one level by typing in CD space period period enter. Let's do another directory listing, but this time Instead of just typing in ls-l, we're going to type in ls-la because I want to be able to see the hidden directories. Any directory that's hidden will start with a period. And there it is. This is the one I'm looking for, this hidden Bitcoin directory right here. Let's go into this directory by typing in cd space dot bitcoin. This directory will store the blockchain, uh, which it is currently downloading, and some other important files. Let's check on the status of the download. Type in tail-f uh, space debug.log. And 
and hit enter. This is going to show you what's happening. Now chances are the logs are being recorded very quickly. But what's important to know here for the time being is the section of the log that says height equals and then a six digit number. It's kind of hard to see but it's kind of like right here. This tells you what block has been downloaded into the database. As of the date of this video, there were approximately 686,000 blocks. So it's going to take a little time to download this. To exit out of this, just press Control C. You can repeat this step later to check your progress. And as was, as was discussed in a previous video, if you have a reasonably fast broadband connection with your new SSD drive, you should be able to download this entire blockchain in a few hours. If you are using an old traditional computer or maybe slow bandwidth, but most importantly an old style, regular old SATA hard drive, it could take days or weeks. If you need to shut down your Pi, it's important to properly shut down Bitcoin Core. Uh, because it is writing to a database and we want to prevent any database corruption. Type in cd space dot dot. Then we're going to go into uh, the bitcoin dash zero dot twenty one dot dot zero directory. Then we're going to go into the bind directory inside of this, inside of the Bitcoin directory. Do a quick directory listing, you can see what's in there. So once we're in this directory, to shut down uh, Bitcoin Core properly, we're going to issue the command dot slash Bitcoin dash CLI stop. And it's going to take a little bit to stop this. So if we go into top, we can see now that we are in B-shutdown. And once this disappears, we'll know that it has shut down properly. And it has shut down. So let's start it back up. Let's exit top with the letter Q. We're in bind. We have to get out of bind. So, uh, cd space dot dot enter. Let's take a look in there. There's our start me script. We can do uh, dot slash start me and Bitcoin is now resuming its uh, downloading and it is running. We get out of this directory and then go back into the hidden directory and then uh, we can take a look and see what's going on. It's starting up and now it's downloading. got a little ways to go check in on it in a few hours so guys that's it for video number four uh, congratulations to you if you've made it this far you're on your way